after studying this module you shall be able to know about the nature of tax system in India learn about purpose of collection of taxes understand the classification of taxes understand the tax jurisdiction provisions and distribution of tax revenues analyze the tax reforms undertaken to improve tax administration a tax may be defined as a pecuniary burden laid upon individuals or property owners to support the government a payment obtained by legislative authority a tax is not a voluntary payment or donation but an enforced contribution obtained by legislative authority so taxation is an unavoidable defrayment to the government authorities of a country the taxes are compulsory unilateral payments made by citizens to governments for which there is no quid pro quo the resources reallocated to the government authorities by way of taxes are not directly connected to the services and goods supplied by the government india has a federal system of government with clear demarcation of powers between the central and the state governments the tax administration is also based on principle of separation the tax system in india mainly is a three tier system which is based between the central state governments on the one side and the local government organizations on the other in india taxes are mainly levied by the central and state governments there are some minor taxes that can also be levied by local authorities like municipalities the authorities to levy a tax is derived from the constitution of india which allocates the power to levy various taxes between the center and the state an important restriction on this power is article 265 of the constitution which states that no tax shall be levied or collected except by the authority of law each tax levied or collected has to be backed by an accompanying law passed either by the parliament or the state legislature taxes are imposed to ensure the applicability of the rule of equity but should be based on the principle of ability to pay tax the ability to pay of an individual depends upon the income and the consumption levels the obligation to pay taxes tends to alter the affected individuals economic behavior as it affects their decisions about production consumption and employment taxes also affect economic incentives willingness to work and earn willingness to save willingness to take risk etc very high rates of personal income tax can alter the choice between work and leisure between savings and consumption and between risky and safe investments or occupations let us now discuss nature of taxes starting with analyzing the purpose of taxes taxes are a major source of revenue levied and collected by the government to meet its public obligations taxes allow for the provision of public and semi public goods in an economy they are essential in nation building as they provide investment funds to the government for creating social overhead capital in times of natural calamities and war additional taxes can be levied to raise funds to cover the costs of such contingencies and rebuild infrastructure damaged by such disasters taxes allow for redistribution of income and meeting of the government's economic administrative and social expenses an effective tax system must be fair or equitable and should be simple both for administration and compliance it should focus on the maintenance of a very low burden of taxation for this there should be a possibility of widening the tax base while keeping the tax rates low a good tax system can also ensure that markets function in a better manner by regulating prices also imposing specific taxes like environmental taxes on both producers of goods or services and consumers can create awareness about external costs classification of taxes in india based on the administration of tax system 
and the system of collection, taxes are broadly classified into two types, direct tax, indirect tax. Direct tax, a tax where the incidence and impact burden of the tax falls on the same individual, so the tax is paid by the same individual on whom the tax is levied, as is the case of income tax. A direct tax is one that cannot be shifted by the taxpayer to someone else. Direct taxes comprise of income tax, corporate tax, gift tax, and minimum alternate tax. Indirect tax, a tax where the incidence an impact burden may fall on different individuals. As in the case of sales tax, the tax is levied on the seller but can be passed on partly or fully on the buyer depending on elasticity of the product by way of price increase. An indirect tax is one that can be shifted by the taxpayer to someone else. Indirect taxes comprise of sales tax, value-added tax, service tax, excise duty. In India, direct tax collections as a percentage of GDP are 6%, with the contribution of personal income tax at 2% and corporate tax at 4%. The indirect tax collections as a percentage of GDP are 4%, with excise at 1.6%, customs at 1.6%, and service tax at 0.8%. Let us now analyze the tax jurisdiction in India. Under the provisions of the constitution, most of the financial powers and major taxation powers are given to the central government. This was done to ensure uniform development of the country having a vast single market with a single tax structure and tax rate so that any inter-regional tax distortions are avoided. Moreover, to ensure that states have enough funds for development and governance, the constitution also provides for taxation jurisdiction of states and sharing of tax revenues between the center and the states. A system of grants in aid from center to the states is also in place. The seventh schedule of the Constitution of India lays down the respective functions and financial resources for the center and the states in the country. It consists of three lists, one, union list, two, state list, three, concurrent list. The union list, which consists of 97 entries and contains sources of tax revenue for the central government. Sources of taxes under union list are taxes on income other than agricultural income, corporation tax, customs duties, taxes on interstate sale of goods, taxes on goods and passengers carried by railways, sea or air, taxes on railway fare and freight, taxes not specifically enumerated in the state list and the concurrent list, etc. The state list which consists of 66 entries and contains sources of tax revenue for the state government. Sources of tax revenue for the state government are land revenue, taxes on agricultural income, estate duty in respect of agricultural land, taxes on lands and buildings, taxes on consumption and sale of electricity, taxes on luxuries, including entertainment, betting and gambling, tolls, taxes on vehicles, etc. The concurrent list consists of concurrent powers of states and the center in certain areas of governance. No major source of tax revenue is included in this list. In the federal system, the taxes levied by central government are tax on incomes, customs duties, central excise and service tax. The state government levies agricultural income tax, income from plantations only, value added tax, sales tax, stamp duty, state excise, land revenue, luxury tax and tax on professions. The local bodies have the authority to levy tax on properties, 
octroi entry tax and tax for utilities like water supply, drainage, etc. Distribution of tax revenue. In India, taxes can be levied by different governments, central, state or local, but there is a procedure of tax sharing which allows an equitable distribution of funds between the center and state. In case of further requirement of funds, the grants in aid process can be used by the state to ask for more funds from the central government. Stamp duties and excise duties on medicinal preparations containing alcohol or narcotics are levied by the union government but are collected and appropriated by the states. Succession and estate duties in respect of property other than agricultural land as per Article 269 of the Constitution are levied and collected by the central government but are assigned to the states within which they are levied. Taxes on income other than agricultural income under Article 270 of the Constitution are levied and collected by the central government but are distributed between the Union and the states in a prescribed manner. Union excise duties are levied and collected by the Union government but may be distributed between the Union and the states. The Constitution under Article 275 provides for the payment of grants in aid by the central government to the state governments. Local bodies like the Panchayati Raj institutions have not been given constitutional powers to levy taxes. Their taxation powers are those that have been delegated by the state government to them and, in most cases, include octroi on entry of commodities into their local area and taxes on property. Panchayati Raj institutions are also given grants in aid by the central government and or by the state government to enable them to meet the expenditure obligations on responsibilities devolved upon them. Recent changes in the Indian tax system. Over the years, the tax system in India has undergone the process of rationalization of the tax rates and simplification of the different taxation laws. Tax reforms aim at making the tax structure more conducive for better compliance, ease of tax payment and better enforcement. Since April 1, 2005, many state governments have replaced the sales tax with value-added tax. However, there are still some states which continue to impose sales tax instead of the newly constituted VAT. It has been proposed that third-party reporting of financial transactions should be allowed. There should be widespread use of computerized database to track financial transactions. The government must also strengthen its tax information exchange with other countries, especially those that act as tax havens. The government offers certain tax incentives that are subject to some specific conditions such as allowance for accelerated depreciation, corporate profit and certain expense deductions. A tax incentive is available for any fresh investment for companies involved in research and development, food processing industry, infrastructure, power distribution, mineral oil production and refining, etc. Let us look at some further changes in Indian tax system. As per the tax reforms proposed in the 2011-12 Union Budget, the tax slabs have been liberalized to a significant extent. It is expected that these decisions will help to reduce the burden on the taxpayers and provide them with more disposable income that can be used for other purposes such as savings and investments. There will be new exemptions for investments in savings instruments such as the Provident Fund. Previously, there was no tax in case a PF member withdrew some amount from his account but that will change now. The category of resident 
but not ordinarily resident will be removed, the resident taxpayers will be provided exemption in case of income made from sources that are outside the country, but this facility will be extended for two straight fiscals starting with the year the taxpayer becomes resident and the immediate next year. The latter benefit will be provided in case the taxpayer was a non-resident for nine years till the year he became a resident of the country. It is expected that this will increase the amount of assessees who can be subjected to taxation in India on the basis of their global incomes. The upper limit of tax exemption for certain investments has been taken up to INR 3 lakhs. The investments eligible for this benefit include children's education, higher education, health insurance premiums, medical treatment of specified diseases, and maintenance of specially able dependents. The upper limit for wealth taxes have been proposed to be increased to 50 crore rupees. The rate has been determined at 0.25% of net wealth. All assets that are not in the certain exempted assets list will be subjected to taxation as well. At present, assets only such as jewelry and urban land are subjected to taxes, but now every asset like securities and shares will be included in the purview of taxes. The new tax rates of 34.78% for the domestic companies and international organizations will bring down the tax expenses for these entities. In case of business income, capital receipts will be treated as normal profits. From 2011-12 onwards, minimum alternative tax will be calculated on the basis of gross assets as opposed to book profits. The new rate has been decided at 2%, which will be reduced to 0.25% in case of banking organizations. This shift signifies that now even loss-making organizations will be subjected to taxes. There are zero provisions for accounting the debts while calculating the gross assets, something that will affect companies that focus on capital-intensive projects. Companies that have several strata of ownership structures will bear the maximum brunt as there will be a tax for every level. There will be no availability of MAT credit, which means that it will effectively become a source of permanent expenditure. Business organizations will no longer need to pay wealth taxes. With regards to capital gains taxes, there will be no differentiation between short and long-term gains. This implies greater tax expenditure for investment-related transactions. In case of benefits accrued from fair market value and indexation, the facility will be provided to assets that have been sold within a year of purchase compared to the previous period of three years. This is expected to be beneficial for the taxpayers. The new fair market value date and indexation base has been changed to April 1, 2000 from April 1, 1981. Securities and transaction tax will be done away with. Tax exemptions will not be provided for reverse mortgages. Now selling a capital asset under a reverse mortgage program will be regarded as taxable transfer and will be subjected to capital gains taxes. The Union Finance Ministry has opted to do away with the allowance granted for interest paid on housing loan that has been taken against a self-occupied property. This decision is at par with the government's intentions to provide the least possible tax exemptions. From now on, international companies will be regarded as resident even if some part of their management is functioning in India. This means they will be subjected to taxes on their global income as well. Royalty is included in the newly proposed code. So, 
the subscription revenue earned by the international organizations will be subjected to taxes if any part of their management is located in the country as per the tax reforms proposed in the 2012-13 union budget the theme of tax proposals was focused on clarity in tax laws stable tax regime non-adversarial tax administration dispute resolution and independent judiciary relief for taxpayers in the bracket of 2 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees tax credit of 2000 rupees to every person with total income up to 5 lakh rupees surcharge of 10% on persons with taxable income exceeding 1 crore rupees additional deduction of interest up to 1 lakh rupees on home loan for first home buyer Reducing rates of securities transaction tax in respect of certain transactions such as equity futures from 0.017 to 0.01% Mutual fund exchange traded fund redemptions at fund counters from 0.25 to 0.001% Mutual fund exchange traded fund Purchase sale on exchanges from 0.1 to 0.001% only on the seller. Another proposed change is introduction of commodities transaction tax in a limited way. CTT on non agricultural commodities future contracts would be levied at the same rate as on equity futures, that is, at 0.01% of the price of the trade. Agricultural commodities will be exempted. Setting up Tax Administration Reforms Commission, TARC, was proposed. The proposed commission shall be responsible for reviewing the application of tax policies and tax laws. Periodic reports will be submitted by TARC and the suggestions will be implemented for strengthening the capacity of the tax system. It was proposed to exempt the securitization trust from income tax. This will help the financial institutions to securitize their assets through a special purpose vehicle. The tax will be levied at the time of distribution of income by the securitization trust at the rate of 30% in case of companies and 25% in the case of an individual or HUF. No tax shall be levied on the income received by the investors from the Securitization Trust. The Indian government is keen on merging all taxes like service tax, excise and VAT into a common goods and service tax. GST system has been proposed in order to simplify current indirect tax system which is very tedious and complicated. All goods and services will be brought into the GST base. There will be no distinction between goods and services. Alcohol, tobacco, petroleum products are likely to be out of the GST regime. The state and central combined tax rate is speculated to be between 16% to 20% in line with the global trend, the modalities for its implementation are still being worked. A tax system reform, including reform in administration, is a continuous exercise for improving the revenue productivity, minimize its distortions and improve equity. The reforms should be undertaken at central, state as well as local levels. A major objective should be to minimize distortions and compliance cost, broadening the base of both central and state taxes and keeping the tax structures simple within the administrative capacity of the governments is important. Phasing out small scale industry exemptions, minimizing exemptions and concessions to industries in services sector, minimizing discretion and selectivity in the tax policy and administration are all important not only for the soundness of the tax system but to enhance 
its acceptability and credibility. Making a transition to information-based tax administration, online filing of tax returns, and compiling and matching information is most desirable. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. First, taxes are major sources of revenue levied and collected by the government to meet its public obligations. Next, the tax system in India mainly is a three-tier system which is based between the central and state governments and the local government organizations. In India, the taxes can be levied by different governments, central, state or local, but there is a procedure of tax sharing which allows an equitable distribution of funds between the center and states. In case of further requirement of funds, the grants in aid process can be used by the state to ask for more funds from the central government. The major objective of tax reforms should be to minimize distortions and compliance cost, broadening the base of both central and state taxes and keeping the tax structures simple within the administrative capacity of the government is important.